Salutations, my name is Eclipse, EQ for short, and welcome to 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore Sky Factory. In this video, I will be trying to survive 100 days on Hardcore in the Sky, with custom islands and the lot. I have three main goals in this 100 days. The first being explore every island, you'll see what I mean when we get into the video. The second is to defeat the Ender Dragon, and the third is to become basically unkillable. I know it's a stretch, but I think I'm up to the task. I hope you enjoy. Oh, and I put a lot of time and care into my videos, so if you could leave a like and a comment for the algorithm gods, that would be amazing. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. It's free, and I guarantee you'll enjoy this video. Plus, you can always unsubscribe. It won't hurt my feelings. And without further ado, welcome to Minecraft Hardcore Sky Factory 100 Days. Okay, so I'm in the world Noah made on day one, and this is the first time I've seen anything he's made. So I'm going in completely blind, and let's just say, oh my god. But we're gonna have to make our way there. Only thing we have to start with is a dirt sapling. So I chop it down and leave the dirt block in its stead. This mod has a feature where if you run around or crouch, it gives the bone meal effect to the trees, so you don't have to spend nine months waiting for a tree to grow. But these drying racks I made got in the way, so I'm gonna have to get rid of them. The whole concept of Sky Factory is progression. So we start with dirt trees that make dirt and we'll make our way up to diamond trees and beyond. But for now, I'm just happy to have some wood so I can expand my one block island. I also have this book to help guide me through all these advancements. That is, unless I lose it, which I hopefully won't ever do that. Day two, I've made my way up to rock trees so we can now make cobblestone. I'm also branching out to the closest island I can see, but I can't get to there without a bucket of water, so for now, it's more farming and less adventuring. I'm crushing these acorns in our tub to make gravel saplings and leaves to make water and dirt to make bone meal, cause that makes sense. But by the end of night two, I had completed the first section of tasks, just need gravel. I realized my first couple of problems with living in the middle of nowhere as well. One, I have no food, and two, I have no bed. We can solve the first problem by eating acorns that the trees drop and roasting them in a furnace, but getting a bed's gonna take a while. I was looking around and found an island with water pouring off of it so I can jump down and make it to island one. This land has a chest and I really wanted to know what's inside of it, but then I found out and... You've gotta be kidding me, Noah. My I spent so long getting up here. You know, I'm almost impressed. Plus side to this excursion though, is I get a ton of dirt and rocks. Yeah, I know that doesn't sound like much, but for me, currently it is, dang it. I get to actually make stone tools. I feel like a king. When I got back home, it was getting late, so I crafted a gravel sapling and I went to bed. Ah, gotcha. I don't get to sleep. Instead, I spent the night turning those clay trees into clay blocks and making clay buckets. They work the same as regular buckets, only thing is they burn when exposed to heat for so long, so lava's a no-go. Or at least it would be if I wasn't only using lava once to make a cobblestone generator. Now I'll never need to mine stone again. Afterwards, I made some ladders to have a way down to the first island because I wanted a way back and forth between them for, you know, dirt and rocks. Afterwards, using another clay bucket, I built over to the other island I had access to and found a monument. And in the monument, I found a book that read, This says open if you dare. I, I don't know if I dare. Do I dare? Welcome to the monument island. This island is home to, as you probably observed, several multicolored statues with perfect with the perfect place for a small sheep that matches the color of the pedestals. Now, this is completely optional and there's no reward whatsoever, but it may be fun fulfilling to see a room full of small little sheep. Each island, big or small, has a hidden sheep statue. Can you find them all? Oh! So now I've got another goal in these 100 days, tacking on to the first three. Woo! Sheep time! That's, that's, that's goal number four. Goal number four is woo sheep time. 
Just, just in case you were wondering. I finished off day four by making iron amber that I can smelt into ingots. We're moving up in the world. Day five, it's time for expansion. I'm making an infinite water source so I can have all the water for all the recipes that require it. And hey, I have the chisel mod in here, so I made it look fancy. I can't help myself. Here it may look weird, but dumping leaves into muddy water makes grass, and that's a real valuable resource for me, so I'm not complaining how I get it. Zag cobblestone doesn't look the greatest, but I'm already committed. Plus, it's being covered up by farmland, so I'm not too mad. I bone mealed all my grass and it gave me tons of seeds, so maybe I'll be able to eat something other than dirt acorns. And since I have infinite rocks, I'm gonna make walls. A little superfluous maybe, but I'd really not like to fall to my death on day nine or something. I finished off the night by making and chopping cottonwood trees. I can use these leaves to make string. I'd like to clarify, I'm cutting out a lot of this, but I had to chop a million trees to progress in this game. Be glad you don't have to sit through watching all of it, cause I did and it was really boring, but I digress. My leaves solidified into string and I was able to use the string to finally make a bed. My Minecraft character hasn't had a good night's rest in eight days, so he's just like me. After that, I used my totally not useless ladder to head back to Island One, cause now I have a sheep to look for. Where the hell did you hide this, Noah? I've looked everywhere, I, I can't find it. Oh, there it is! Hide it in plain sight, you cheeky bitch, Noah. Why stop there when we've got another island over yonder that looks like a pyramid? And it's got a sheep on it that I need. Well, that was easy to find. Come on, Noah, you're gonna have to try harder than that. Okay, I swear creepers in this mod sound like Owen Wilson, and I don't know how that makes me feel. Wow. He was also guarding gold, so I'm gonna have to make an iron pick and come back to snag that later. But Creeper Wilson seemed to despawn, so I'm unimpeded collecting these gold blocks. <laughs> That did take all day though, so once I was done, I headed back home and slept the night off. I birthed pigs on day 9, and I'm waiting for them to mature so I can make some bacon. Also, I'm still progressing, I'm now onto tin trees. Eventually, I'll have those diamonds. I've decided to neglect sleep to be more productive, and made a second floor to my platform. This is where I'll have all my trees be, because they're really getting in the way downstairs. Er, down ladder. I don't have stairs. By the end of night 10, it was looking good. I put clay, gravel, sand, and coal saplings up here because I'm gonna need the grout for a forge later. But basic needs come first, and I was starving. So using my now fully grown pigs, I made a bacon sapling that literally grows bacon on its branches. Not much to report on day 12, just chopped down everything upstairs and started searing the grout. I'd say things are going really well. But I yearn for some adventure, so on day 13, I went out to a new island that's literally just a fucking train. Look, Noah, I know you're good at building, no need to flex this hard. The sheep was on top of the smoke billowing out of the top. Sheep time. I placed my friend on the monument and headed back to camp, where more expansion took place. I need a spot for the forge, and I think this black cobble does the trick perfectly. Also chopped trees down, but everyone knows that by this point. Let's keep this ball rolling. Here's another island, and it's full of flowers. This actually is the portal to the Twilight Forest, so I'll have to keep that in mind. Don't think I can kill a hydra, though, with a broken axe and a slab of bacon right now, so I'm gonna have to, you know, table that for later. And here's the sheep. Sheep time. I spent the rest of the night forging my forge, and by the end of the night, I got it working. I even poured molten tin over a tiny tree, which we all know makes metal trees. Had to expand my forge platform today, cause I'm placing all the basic necessities on it. Oh, and I made a fixable iron ax. Very happy about him. I'll name him Bax. Bax the ax. Later that night, I crafted a lapis sapling. Wow, lap, lapis sap, ap, la, ab, ab, lap, ab, 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 lap, that's a tongue twister. Later that night, I crafted a lapis sapling and bada bing bada boom, blue tree. The next day, I went to the island that is literally just a crashing airplane. Grabbed the sheep and read some Edgar Allan Poe. Th thanks, Noah. I introduced the white sheep to his new abode and made redstone saplings. We're getting so close to diamond trees. This is what the recipe looks like, by the way. That's what I'm working towards. Silver amber, check. Molten silver, check. Pour silver on tree, check. Silver tree is a go. Time for a good night's rest. It's time. A diamond sapling has been created. Now, using their acorns, I can make literal diamonds. So no more stone tools. You don't know how happy that makes me. Even though I've been using vein miner this whole time, because a lot of you guys yelled at me in the comments section the last 100 days, it just feels so premium to have actual diamond tools. Also, don't judge me making this axe here. I got a little excited. Sorry, Bax the axe. I don't need you anymore. It's not you, it's me. We're nowhere near done though, this is only day 18. So using the iron and clay that are burned into bricks, we can make bonsai pots that will automate tree growth so I don't have to worry about it anymore. While I was trying to do that, however, one of my trees revolted and tried to kill me. It's okay, I got revenge. Okay, seriously trees, I'm trying to automate you for factorial purposes. The least you could do is be compliant. By the end of the night, things were starting to look promising. 
But we can't be completely done with good old manual chopping just yet, so I spent all of day 19 doing that. The dawn of day 20, I planted dark oak, because I think it's really pretty, and I'm gonna need a lot of supplies if I actually plan to build a house, which, spoilers, I do. I plan to build it like it's an island of its own, in the center of everything. Make it look nice. So, I'm chopping. The next day, I begin construction, so I suit it up, so I'm not vulnerable. Okay, so I'm not that vulnerable. Diamond armor isn't perfect. And I built out to where I wanted my house to be and made a chest for all my supplies. And a chisel, because you know I'm fancy. And then I was faced with the hardest challenge in all of Minecraft. Not the Ender Dragon, no. Worse. Not six withers, no, 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 no. Worse than that. I had to actually build a circle. <gasps> Yeah, jokes aside, this was really difficult, and I'm pretty sure it's lopsided, but I made a circle, and I have plans for how my house will look right now. This is just its platform, but the circle is done. Also, I don't know why, but this mod spawns androids, and they hit really hard, so I'm glad I decked myself out in diamond armor when I did, or this would be 21 days in Sky Factory, not 100. I'm gonna level with you guys, and be completely honest with my YouTube audience. I'm jealous. Jealous of how good Noah is at building. I feel inferior, which is probably why I went all out on this house. I wanted it to look at least like it fit in with Noah's designs, his amazing nether castle or his end fortress blimp, and I may have gone overboard. So once I finished the base of the floating rainbow sky island of amazement, it was time to get building the actual house. This build took me three days. I tried a stupidly fancy design, especially with the roof that was literal hell, and kind of bit off more than I could chew, but I think I ended up making it look good, so I'm happy with it. The factory has been running well this whole time too, and I'm about to bathe in the profits. Okay, so this may look weird, but if you put a cauldron above a heat source, i.e. torch, and place cobblestone in there, you make lava. Then, drench that lava in water and you'll get obsidian. I need obsidian for a lot of things, like enchantment tables, panic rooms, cakes, you know the works. So I'm getting a lot of it here. I spent the latter half of night 28 trying to fill out the rest of my advancements, and one of them is to make a slimy sapling. How do you do that? Well... Milk cactus. Day 29, I was dangerously running around my circle platform when I had the thought, oh, I could die, so let's not. I'm gonna make this platform much safer with water and everything, but I got distracted by something shiny, and that something shiny is this glowing tree on a new island, so that means it's sheep time. Okay, buddy, put the gun away. We're all friends here. Okay, I'm not your friend, and I know I'm killing you, but... <sighs> whatever. Gotta light this place up so no more of you guys will spawn. So that sparkly shiny thing that my ADHD brain latched onto was an Enderman spawner. I think I'll be able to use that. Also sheep located. Welcome home, little buddy. I'll table the Enderman Island for later because I want to see what's going on in this nether castle. A zombie pigman spawner, so let's not piss any of them off. And this chest with a backpack. I don't think you can make these, so I'm really grateful that Noah put this here. This guy hella caught me off guard. You can tell because I'm just swinging an axe at him and I'm doing nothing. Then it got worse, so I jumped down, but there it is. I'll zoom in so you guys can see. The sheep. But how can I get to him? I don't know, but I'm just going to go for it. Also, got a bow. Never a bad thing. But then... leave that sheep for now but i'll be back hi enderman bye enderman oh no dude <laughs> no dude this was supposed to be the chill 100 days this was supposed to be eq gets to relax and build some fun things and show off some cool things and make cool commentary nice script all big fun good video ha 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 great not oh god everything is awful and i'm about to die i spent the rest of the night doing safe things like dunking cacti in milk and <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Like dunking cacti and milk and completing the final challenge of, of tab one. Damn it. Okay, it bothers me that my circle is lopsided, so we're fixing it. And I'm lining the middle with cobble now, so it's safe. Are you happy? Now we're filling it with water. Boom. Told you it would be cool and safe. I win. Now, the only problem, I can't get up to my house, but we can figure that out later. I've been doing a lot these past 30 days, and we've still got a lot to do. So to help me stay on track and not forget things, I wrote this sign at the old place where I no longer live at. Yeah, that'll fucking help. I'm too scared of the nether island, so let's go see if the ender island is more my speed. 
Nope, it's filled with a hundred shulkers. If I didn't place this water here for me while I was building, I'd kind of be fucked when the levitation effect wears off. So I got really lucky there. There is some neat stuff in this room though, so I guess it's worth it. Plus, look at all these books that I get to steal. Borrow, b b borrow. I get to borrow them. Hi, Q. Hi, Noah. Damn it, they hit me again. Dude, literally levitation is the worst. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rant. The levitation is the worst, but I see the sheep. And if I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna have to schmoove. Wait a minute, those aren't shulkers. Those are shulker boxes. Don't mind if I do. Sheep time, boys! Right where you belong. The next day, I ran back to the Ender Island to grab some of the blocks, because I know I'll need them later. And then I went full on rescue mission to the Nether Sheep. Grabbed him and ran back home. Time to sleep. Now we get saucy. This island has always mystified me, but it ended up being an underwater globe with guardians. And after my attempts to drain the water failed, I tried to look for the sheep, then was apprehended by the local fish guards. Noah, you're fucking insane, you know that? Uh, I, there's no way in hell I'm ever getting that sheep. I don't even know where it is. Got a couple sea lanterns though, so that's pretty cool. I spent the rest of the day leveling the Enderman Island because I have some plans for it. I made a platform that night, but it was really hard because the Endermen were just spawning so much. But that's kind of what I want, so I'm not too mad. I made a diamond bucket, which logistically makes no sense. They seem to have like a black hole or something in them that lets them hold 10 times as much as regular buckets, but they're the same size, just... How? I need to stop learning about buckets, they hurt my brain. We need all this water, because I'm building the world's most scuffed Enderman farm. I don't have any of the materials to build a proper Enderman farm, so we're basically building a boxing ring where they can't teleport out and where I can hide and be perfectly safe. That night I got to try it out, and I think it works really well. I managed to get 32 Ender Pearls in one night. Don't, just don't, please don't judge me. I recorded this part just as I woke up, and yeah. Yeah. Either way, I made a squeezer to squeeze all this cotton amber into wool, because I'm going to need a lot of it. The squeezing process, by the way, took forever. There's got to be a way to automate this in the future. But with an ender pearl and eight wool, I can make elevators to go right up to my house anytime I need to. Nothing can come up here, and I'm perfectly safe from those android thingies. Right? Perfectly safe? Yeah, I'm perfectly safe. I started off the day by getting a Twitch follow. Thank you for the follow. Uh, shout outs to my Twitch. You can follow me there, and apparently the notifications pop up on this channel, which makes no sense. And then it's time for organization! If I'm gonna properly move into my house, I'm gonna have to move all my stuff over there. And in this mod, I'm gonna have to make specific places for every tree. So that's what I did for day 38 and 39. Also, I fought an angry android that didn't know how walls worked. Look at him. Look at him and laugh at his impotence. Day 40 is a big one. It started off with me heading to the mushroom island to see if I could find another one of them sheeps. And guess what I found on this island? Yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, it's it's not not very no one was surprised. And the magenta sheep. Sheep time. Magenta on this island and not brown? Weird. After that, I headed to the slimy air balloon to get the greeny sheepy. I'm sorry. I will never call it that again. Found the sheep and ran into a problem. So lime green's the sheep but it is not a color in the monument. Huh. All right, well, red sheep and green sheep, you guys got a friend. I'm gonna call you Mario and Luigi. Not you, no, you get, you get to stay here. You don't get to have friends. After that, I ran back to the water island and knocked out one of the spawners before I ran into more trouble. I'm gonna have to actually like get better gear or something to take this. I can't just storm in and rush through all my problems. They're gonna be down, so I had to dip for now, but I'll be back. Oh, don't mind me, just killing more Endermen. The next day, I began to prep to head to the Nether. In this mod, you can't go to the Nether through conventional means. The portal just doesn't light. So instead, you make a cake and you surround it in obsidian to make a Nether cake. So to pull that off, I'm gonna need a cake. Meaning, I need a chicken farm, wheat, sugar, eggs, the works. I started by making more grass and then making a second layer under my house. This is gonna be where I put both my farm and my forge. And of course, I have to make it a circle 
which took me forever. God damn my OCD. The next day I started searing more grout for my forge down there. And then I set up shop with a new cobblestone generator and everything. Eventually, I'll never need to go back to my old base. Nighttime came and all I was doing was making a circle. Then the world's largest android spawned and played Ring Around the Rosie with me until he left. <laughs> He's just out getting milk though, guys. He'll be back soon. I finished the grass platform down there, so that's nice. And I fenced it in too, so my animal friends don't jump to their demise. Day 45, I got everything I need to make cow, chicken, and pig seeds to populate my new pens down in my base. And on day 46, I started growing my new farm animals. That sentence sounds so fucking weird, oh my god. And I planted my sugar cane in one of those bonsai pots for infinite sugar. And if you've been keeping track, that would mean I have every ingredient growing for a cake. So now all I have to do is wait a couple days. But no time is wasted in the 100 days. So while we wait, I'm gonna build a mop grinder. It might not work as well as vanilla ones do because of the Android spawn rate in this mod, but I should be able to get enough XP from it to get at least a couple enchants down the line. Hell, maybe I'll even get an infinity bow. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Anyways, I spent the rest of the day building the grinder and I'm not even close to done. These things are bulky. But as dawn broke, I had enough sugar to finish my cake recipe. And I accidentally held shift when I went to make the cakes, so uh... Well, I have enough cakes for future dimension exploring, I guess. Well, I've waited long enough. Instead of finishing the mob grinder on day 48, I made the nether cake. I fully expected this to take me to a one block nether that isn't very useful, but no, I actually got a full nether. Only ore here is quartz though, and I don't think any fortresses or structures spawn, sad face. But the wither skeletons and blazes spawn everywhere, so that's a huge plus. Or at least it was, until they started kicking my ass. After a while, I couldn't handle the smackage, so I placed down my overworld cake and left for the time being. But the nether has not beaten me. I'll be back. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I know something about this mod. The ender dragon isn't a thing. For whatever reason, when you head to the end, the dragon dies immediately. So using the cake, we go there and this happens. But I picked up the dragon eggs, so technically I defeated the dragon, right? Oh well, withers are still a thing we can fight, and we have a whole Twilight Forest myriad of bosses to face, so that should be enough for me. Anyways, enough tangents. As you can see with the footage, I spent the rest of day 49 making the mob grinder functional, and not just a giant block in the sky. And I'm still not done! Still not done. <sighs> Nope, oh, still not done. Done! And just as I thought, I'm getting a lot of androids and creepers, but it works. I spent the beginning of day 52 just grinding away, until I realized that's a dumb thing to do with 72 levels, and then I went to make books. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Look, I, I have no justification for this, just, just don't laugh. Enchantment table's made, and in this mod we can have over level 30 enchants, so that's interesting. The next day I headed off to the end again to look for both chorus fruit, and to see if the end has any ores I can mine, when I found this. I think it's a black hole, or a, it says gravitational anomaly, but I think it's a black hole, because when I touched it... What I'm looking for in the end is cobalt and ardite. Since it wasn't in the nether, I thought it could be here, but alas, it was not. Of course, I'm stupid. All the ores in this mod are made from trees, so why would it be easy? This is legitimately how I get lapis in this mod. Look at this. You see why I cut out a lot of stuff now? Either way, I got a couple cool enchants today. Nothing major, so I won't really go over it, except these boots. Oh my, okay, damn. <laughs> Depth Strider 3, Feather Falling 5, and Breaking 6? Four, that's a four. I know my Roman numerals, and protection for. Wow. This set of armor is more of a placeholder till we get the manulimum armor. How do you say it? This set of armor is more of a placeholder till we get the manulum armor. Then I got my ass kicked in the nether for a while till retreating back to my cake for safety. Good day. But that's not gonna keep me down. Day 54, I'm back. And I even brought an obsidian pick to find an ardite and cobalt. I, oh my God, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I'm the dumbest man alive. I haven't learned my lesson. Everything in this game is just trees. Why Why did I think anything would be different? After that, I started doing research and I didn't like what I saw. So what I need for these trees above all else is pristine matter. After a bit of Googling, I learned that you get pristine matter from simulation chambers. So that's what I'm building here. The thing about these chambers though, is they take data channels that are powered by killing mobs. So I'm gonna need to kill six blazes to charge mine to the first level. So I'm in the nether again, day 56, where I actually find a nether fortress. I didn't think structures were in this mod, but I guess I was wrong. Now this 
is where it gets interesting. Inside the Nether Fortress, you can find chests, which in this mod pack should house items for Cyclic, a mod which I'm quite fond of. And lo and behold, it did. These hearts I'm picking up increase my max health by one whenever I eat them. And that's all fine and dandy, but what's really important are these two items. This one's the Air Charm. Turning it on allows me to just walk on the clouds and jump on air. And the one on the left is the Wing Charm. It gives me slow fall if I'm too high off the ground whenever I fall. Combining both of these charms, I should be able to make headway into the end. And now that I know that there are end fortresses, I gotta go after them. And yes, I know I came here to kill blazes, but it didn't seem to do anything for the counter, so I'll have to figure that out later. The next day, I set off for the end, but first I gotta break the game real quick. Oh no. Oh, it did not just crash. Oh, it did not just crash. Oh, you son of a bitch. Now it's time to go to the end. And like I said, I'm using a mix of the air charm and wing charm to basically fly through the end unimpeded. Side note here, I forgot to mute the audio when my game crashed, so for the next couple of days, the audio is going to be in and out so you don't hear me overlapping with me. Don't worry, it only lasts a couple days. It's not that big a deal. I spent the next couple of days raiding and fortresses, where I found a couple more heart containers and a lot of diamond gear. Of course, I picked up elytra and shulker shells and such. I continued dimension hopping day 59 back to the nether, where I killed an excessive amount of blazes and still my blaze chip stayed faulty. Day 60, I figured out that I needed to make a deep learner and put the chip in that so that I can then upgrade it by killing blazes. And if you think that's bullshit, you haven't seen nothing yet. Anyways, back to blaze killing, with purpose this time. Now I can put the blaze chip in the simulation chamber and nothing. System energy level's critical. <sighs> Hold on, let me watch a Minecraft tutorial. Now I got it working, but that's gonna take a while to give me pristine matter. So in the meantime, I'm gonna need to kill a lot of wither skellies. So I made a skelly chip. That's fun to say. Skelly chip, skelly chip, skelly chip. I headed back to the nether and went to town. I had enough wither skulls to summon a wither, and I needed the nether star for an ardite tree. But when I spawned it... I couldn't tell if anything was different besides the name and skin of the... Get out of here, last it Necron! really close to death with its lingering wither 2 effect. And it dropped two supremium, supremium essence on death, so that was neat. Okay, look at this picture. Do you see anything wrong with it? That. That thing. It's pristine wither matter. Not wither skeleton, wither. Meaning I need to make a wither chip and kill six more withers. What the fuck? Uh... Dead, 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 dead. Dead. Deadly. Dead. 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 Deader. Dead. 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 And double dead. Okay, I'll stop for now. Because if I want to kill that many withers, I'm going to need an infinity bow. I mean, how hard could it be to actually get one of those, right? Right. Right. Well, seven bows down and I've got nothing. I'll try again later. Anyways, I cleaned up the rest of the wither skulls I needed on day 68. Yes, I needed 18. And after that, I got a little excited. Sound warning here. After that close call, it was time to fight all the withers. Without an infinity bow, mind you. So I made a battleground where I should be able to gimp the hell out of these necrons. And on day 70, I spawned my first wither. Okay, what in the fuck are you?
So no one told me that they can explode obsidian. So yeah, I feel kind of dumb, but I really thought they couldn't break the obsidian. And now this guy is just roaming free, terrorizing the local Enderman population. So I went to go put a stop to it, but without a bow, that's easier said than done. And he started bopping me. My only saving grace here is that I could jump straight into the Ender Dragon's portal and come back home safely. Fuck! Oh my god, withers are fucking bad, dude! Withers are bad in this! Oh my god, withers are bad! When I headed back to the end, he was still there, and still at large, so I got to bomb on And after using a non infat yeah, bow, I managed to take him out. The second wither I fought inside the end rock, and this proved to be a better solution. Took this guy out with ease. But it got dicey there for a bit, so whenever I got home, I took one of my nether stars, a rotten potato, a golden apple, purple blocks, and an emerald, and made my first soul stone. These work like totems of undying, so I shouldn't be dying anytime soon. Which is good, because the wither on day 71 didn't play along with the whole you stay in the hole and I beat you to death game. The other withers played along nicely, and now I have six nether stars, a basic wither chip for my simulation chamber, and 14 supreme essence. But that'll come into play later. Finally, we can make an Ardite sapling. I've literally been trying to make this since like day 50. <laughs> Using pristine blaze matter from our simulation chamber, a nether star, and dunking a slimy sapling in our pyrothium dust, which I'm making in my forge, we have everything but the glowstone ingots. They'll be easy to make, right? <laughs> Remember when I said that you haven't seen anything yet about the tedium and bullshit that Sky Factory has? <clears throat> day 72 through day 81. To make glowstone ingots, you're gonna need osmium. How do you get osmium? I'm glad you asked, motherfucker. You're gonna need an osmium compressor, some pretty standard shit. But to make that, we're gonna need enriched alloy, which of course requires a metallurgic infuser. To make that though, you're gonna need osmium. How does that make any sense? Trees, fucking trees. But osmium requires a bit of sass. How much sass? This much sass. So now we need copper, nickel, iron, and quartz. Easy, but actually, no, it's not easy because copper requires red sand. So I'm stealing it from Noah. Ha ha, fuck you, I'm a genius, you're doo-doo. Make the amber, now on to the nickel. For the nickel, you need poop water. You heard me right, poop water. How do we get that? Well, you mix red water and green water, so I gotta burn a cactus. Boom, poop water, nickel complete. Quartz time, uh-oh, we need emerald. Take that nickel and a blue fucking tree and boom, goddamn cactus, boom, goddamn emerald. Use emerald tree and quartz to boom, quartz tree. Also orange slime, makes sense. Boom, quartz, check. But uh-oh, we have osmium, and now we need steel. How make steel? Easy, I lied, hard make steel. Still not easy. We need an alloy furnace. You starting to see how bullshit this is? Put an iron in the alloy furnace. Now we need graphite because things can't just be simple. And of course, graphite requires a goddamn manufactory. Put the coal in the manufactory, then make steel. Use steel and put that into the osmium compressor, blaze rods to power it, osmium glowstone ingot, done! You know, it's really just that simple. And just like that, we've made an Ardite sapling. Now all we need is cobalt, which requires pristine wither matter, so I put the wither chip in the simulation chamber. I have multiple iteration chances, so hopefully I'll get it before the 100 days is up. Day 82, I'm planting Ardite saplings to get more out of them. It's working out, my wither chips already ran three iterations, I guess it was already charged, and I got nothing from it. Sad. Day 83, I did my final bout of research on this day, so there's not much to note about this. Other than the fact that it always comes back to fucking trees! I have a lot of time waiting for my pristine wither matter, so in the meantime, I'm trying to get an infinity bow. But I distinctly remember it being way easier than this. I'm using my XP boost 3 pickaxe and the only ore in the end to get quick levels, and it ends me with nothing. So I went to bed infinityless and sad. The next day came and I still have nothing to do, so to preoccupy my time, I'm gonna start on the Twilight Forest. Just let me nail this MLG real quick. Got it. When I summoned the portal and jumped in, I expected it to just be the Twilight Forest, but it wasn't. So I guess we're gonna have to save this for 200 days. I can't believe everything's just floating here. Good thing I brought my air charm. The next day, I preoccupied my time by making a third layer to my house. This layer will be for storage and be made of endstone and obsidian. And of course I had to use a chisel on everything cause you know I'm fancy. The next day, it was looking good. Just need to chisel the rest of it and we're ready to start setting up chests here. Which of course means organization. But I didn't have as much stuff as I thought I would and by day 89, I was done organizing everything. But I did get the pristine wither matter and after seven iterations with a 5% chance, I think that's pretty good luck. And cobalt tree done. Yes. But by day 89, I realized something. I'm still not unkillable and I haven't explored all the islands. So I really need to kick it into third gear. I have about 10 days left and about 20 days worth of stuff to do. So needless to say, 
I was frantic. I started by draining the forge. I'm gonna need it as empty as possible for the cobalt and ardite amber. I didn't have much, but I made amber out of what I could to start making manulum. And I made another chip, this time for Enderman. Why? It's a secret. And I made use of my Enderman farm all night to try to get this thing to self-aware tier. I only managed to get it to advanced, but we have a couple more nights, so I'm not too worried. Day 91, I went to put the chip in the simulation chamber, because that needs to be working all day while I make the Manulum gear. I also took that Supremium Essence and started crafting ingots. I want a Supremium Axe and a Supremium Sword that I can enchant. Before I can make any Supremium gear, though, I need some Prosperity Shards. And, uh, there's a tree for that. So while I'm waiting for that tree to grow, I'm making manulum ingots all day. And when night fell, it was time for me to kill more endermen. I think this has been the most efficient use of my time and resources for this entire 100 days. Now it's time for the tool cores for our essence weapons. But I needed more emeralds, so I just chopped emerald trees. Oh, and if you're wondering why my skin's different, that's because I forgot to change it from my SMP skin. That's right, I have an SMP called Apotheosis happening over on my Twitch. Go check it out if you have the time. We stream it all the time. It's the first link in the description. But enough with the plugging, gotta grab more prosperity shards and kill more endermen. By the end of the night, my model was self-aware, which gives it a 42% chance to drop what I need it to, which is good because I need four of them. Got my second pristine ender matter, made some supremium ingots, and I had to manually make sure these prosperity shards grow. But that's okay. I'm not new to some elbow grease. Day 94, I'm back in the nether for the last time. I need three more wither skulls for a tool core. And with this mod's increased drop rate, it wasn't that hard to find them. Then I made the Supremium and Superium tool cores that I'm gonna need, and by the end of day 94, this is what I'm rocking out with. I'm liking it. One of the final things to do is to enchant my Manulum gear. That's why I made about a stack of ingots, because I'm gonna need to fuse multiple pieces in the anvil to make what I need. I finished off the night by making weapons and getting ready for the finale. I've made three soul stones, just in case things go south. I have a wing charm, and finally enchanted all my gear with these enchantments. My helmet. Soulbound 4, Aqua Affinity, Respiration 3, and Proc 4. My chest plate, Unbreaking 5, Proc 4. My pants, Proc 3, Tombstone Soulbound, kinda useless, cause if I die it's over, and Unbreaking 4. And finally, my boots, with Feather Falling 6, Projectile Protection 6, Speed Boost 2, Multi Jump 3, and Unbreaking 4. So yeah. I think I'm prepared. I bet you guys thought I forgot about the sheep statues. Nope. And on day 96, I went to go claim the Water Island one. I went in with my new gear and took out all the spawners with ease. Then I spent all day looking around for the sheep and look at where Noah hid this motherfucker. Cheeky bitch. Whatever, you go here. The final island is the stone sphere down here. Bars? I ran over and used a bucket so I don't die, soul stones can't save me from the void, and broke in. But I immediately got shot, so I decided to grab my still not infinity bow and a stack of arrows and come back. Then I took out all the enemies and grabbed the final sheep. And with that, the monument is finally complete. Bar the fact that there's no orange sheep and instead there's just a red and green sheep on top of there, it's perfect. So that leads only one thing left. I baked a cake to celebrate surviving 100 days and I ate it at my old base, such memories. Then I went to bed for when I wake up, we're gonna kill the ender dragon. Now I wasn't quite honest with you guys. Yes, the dragon died back in the 40s and 50s, but we still have one trick up our sleeve. I made the end crystals using pristine enderman matter, and now I'm gonna see if we can go revive her. I have no idea if this mod, since the mod killed the dragon on start, I have no idea if I'm allowed to revive it. I am going to try anyway. Does it revive her? Or is this gonna be the really, really anticlimactic ending? Oh fuck, it does. So you actually can fight her. And so on day 99, that's what I did. Enjoy.
And just like that, I've become unkillable. I've explored every island and I've killed the Ender Dragon. I went back home and to end day 99, I made a beacon with my very last nether star. I could only light it with gold for now, but maybe for 200 days, we can make it out of emerald or something. The final day was spent reminiscing. I went back to all the islands and places I've explored over these 100 days. It's kind of crazy to believe that I started this with only one block and one tree, and it grew to all this. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe. It's free, and if you change your mind, you can always unsub. It won't hurt my feelings. And of course, hit that like button and leave a comment for the algorithm gods. I want as many people to see this video as possible. I put a lot of work into it. And if you haven't had enough EQ content, I did another 100 and 200 days here. Click the annotation to go watch it. But for now, my name has been Eclipse, EQ for short, and thank you for watching. <laughs>